So I'm noticing as I'm going forward in my healing process that I care less when people disagree with me. Um, I used to care a lot. <laughs> and I would, you know, um, like in my personal life with a partner or like on the internet, like, oh, <laughs> you don't agree. Like, you know, I work so hard with my partner or with whoever, Joe Shema on the internet, um, to like express my perspective and to like lay out my opinion in a really clear way. You know, I've had this idea that if I just communicate well enough and effectively enough, that the other person is going to understand where I'm coming from. And if not agree, be like, oh yeah, I totally get that. That is, it's not apparently how that works. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't work that way. Uh, it just doesn't seem to work that way in most of the relationship dynamics. No, I can't even say that. Because it does work that way with a lot of people in my life. But like, I've had partners where it didn't work that way and I've had people on the internet where it didn't work that way. So, I'm bringing this concept of interaction to all of my interactions and not having any discrimination or discernment about where I apply it. So this idea like, oh, if I just explain myself, like they'll understand. And they'll be able to have, be able to perspective take for me, have empathy for me. Um, so with my, so I was married for, I want to say 14 years. I was with my ex-husband for 15 years. And for the most part, I mean, even when we disagree, he understands where I'm coming from. Um, he might not agree with me, but he gets it. But I did notice with my ex-partner, he would not understand. Or there have been people online where I'm like trying to explain like, and no. Um, and there's this phrase that, you know, if you're in the um, healing abuse community, whatever, long enough recovery community, uh, it says um, something about not, you know, don't give your energy to people who are committed to misunderstanding you. And I think it's very important. And I also think that people who do not make the mental effort, the mental leap to understand where you're coming from, to kind of see your perspective. That's really important information to have. Um, I do notice, you know, particularly when I was, you know, much younger, um, I had this like, I was very needy, had a lot of needy energy. I mean, which made sense, you know, I was too mentally unhealthy parents, <laughs> both of whom were abusive, one of whom had the opportunity to really be abusive. Well, actually, no, they both did. Um, you know, I went into foster care. Like, there was, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on. So it would make sense completely that I would be coming from a place of, of neediness. And I would chase, you know, like, I'm trying to get people to meet my needs. I'm trying to be, trying to get my needs met. Needs that are supposed to be met. <laughs> Needs that are reasonable for people, for children to have. And so I was chasing other people for love. I was chasing them for understanding. I was chasing them for compassion, for attention, for admiration, um, for their agreement with me. And the more I center myself in my own inner world. So, you know, it doesn't mean nobody else matters, but like we should be the center of our inner world. Like <laughs> that completely makes sense. Um, the more I center myself in my world, the more I value my opinion, the more I value what I think, the more I have integrity with that, the more I stick with it, the less important all the other people, what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what their opinion is. You know, it's okay for them to disagree or even have a poor opinion of me. Like, yeah, sure, you know. Um, we choose our own connections 
And, you know, in my opinion, I feel I'm great. And I'm a great friend and a really great partner and a really great mom. And if someone decides that they don't agree with me, they're not vibing with me, they don't like me, like, yeah, do that. And also, the natural consequence of that is that, like, I'm not going to be in your life or I'm not going to be in your life in a positive way. Um, in my, my opinion, <laughs> you know, that's his own natural consequence, right? Um, I think I'm great. Um, and again, so if somebody is not vibing with me, if they don't think I'm great, they don't agree with me, uh, or whatever it is, you know, then it makes sense for them to like not have me in their orbit, <laughs> to not give my opinions credence, to back up. What I am noticing though, is that those of us who are coming from like these not great backgrounds, we're like holding on to people. <laughs> we don't let go. We're not like, oh man, this person disagrees with me. Or this person isn't making the effort to understand me or where I'm coming from. Or giving me the benefit of the doubt. And like, okay, no, I'm not about that life. Um, and instead of going, okay, I'm out. We're trying to change their mind. <sighs> First of all, it's impossible. Uh, really... <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, having a real solid understanding of what we have control over is super important. But also, like, even if we could control the way another person thinks about us, like, should we? You know, is that reasonable? Um, a lot of this does come from a place of, like, I'm in a safe place. And whether or not people agree with me doesn't impact me in terms of whether I'll lose my job or whether uh, I'm exposed to violence or whatever. Like obviously there's a lot of, there, there are nuances. You know, I, I wanna respect that. But generally speaking, we don't need people to agree with us. If they don't agree with us, they're not our people. Like why, why have them in our orbit? <laughs> why, why put our energy there? I do notice, so over time, um, I've been doing this, I've read it for eight years, and I've noticed there are certain people who only comment, it's been like eight, eight years, they will only comment if they're feeling triggered and they disagree with shit. <laughs> like, no, this is wrong, I have feelings. You know, and I, I did used to be like, ah. Oh. You know, like I'd see their name come up, I'm like, oh man, God, come on, you know, like silence all the rest of the time. And what I realized was, you know, it's all within our own purview whether we are recognizing and celebrating and shining a light on the things that are that we feel are positive, that we enjoy, that we think are great, or whether we're focusing on the negative shit. <laughs> so, you know, if, um, oh, there's this, okay, so my favorite author is Orson Scott Card. And I wanna say about four years ago, so I used to follow like his personal blog, and I, I love his work, his, not the science fiction work so much, uh, the fantasy work. I love his fantasy work so much. I've quoted a ton of it on the subreddit. And I used to follow his personal blog. And then right around the time, the first time Black Lives Matter showed up, he was saying some stuff and I was like, mm, no, I'm not feeling this at all. <laughs> and I just, I you know, I kind of like, I read a ton of crap. So it's real easy to let a thing go. And I don't know, so the recent Black Lives Matter protest started and I was like, hmm, I wonder what's going on there. So I went back to the blog and I noticed there was this dude who had been commenting for years. And he was still this like antagonist person. Like not one comment was like, yeah, I, you know, I agree. I've had this experience too. Like literally every fucking comment was contentious, argumentative. <laughs> You know, you're going to know if you're dealing with these people, if they're contentious and argumentative. And instead of going, oh, no, like you're misunderstanding what I've said. Or if you'll just consider this point, then you'll like understand where I'm coming. No. Once we let go, once we give ourselves the freedom to accept that like other people are not vibing and they're not feeling it and they disagree. Good for them. You know what I mean? Like, they get to have their opinion. Um, I used to tell, I used to tell my ex-partner, I'd be like, I get to, 
you know, I didn't think I was wrong, obviously, but I'd be like, I get to be wrong. I get to be wrong about things. Like, ah, oh, you know, he just, he, who would kept, keep pushing? Because in his mind, he was right. <laughs> I'm right, you know. Uh, the most important thing to him wasn't connection. It was like, that he's right. Meanwhile, of course, I think I'm right. But like, I'm trying to, I'm doing all this emotional labor, all this work to understand his position, to go, okay, this is where you're coming from, but like where I'm coming from is X, Y, Z. And you know, if you think about it, you know, ABC, like I'm sit, I look back on how much energy, intellectual, emotional, cognitive energy I spent doing both sides of the work. That's not my job to do. It's not my job to sit there and like go, oh, well, he's not understanding me. So let me just explain myself more. Let me connect the dots for him. Then he'll get it, <laughs> you know? Um, maybe, maybe, maybe we ask for clarification or we go, oh, well, okay, I see you feel this way, but mm, I'm coming from a different place uh, or this doesn't make sense to me or whatever it is. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways to handle it, but when we're in that energy of chasing another person, you know, we want them to understand us and agree with us and whatever. We are giving our power to that person. We're giving them our attention. We're giving them our focus. Um, oh, I'm not going to remember. One of the commenters said that he saw a, tw a tweet that said something to the effect of, I'm tired of like every argument ending with asking for this other person's empathy. And I was like, yeah, you know, in politics, in just regular online interactions, in personal relationships, you know, the toxic, critical people that we didn't, um, they're not perspective taking for us. They're not understanding where we're coming from. They're not making the effort to clarify. They're assuming they know what we feel and think and like what our thought paradigm is or what our reasoning is. And like just, you free up so much of your energy in life. You just let it go. Like, okay, now I will say, I will get into it if I think a person's perspective is dangerous for other people. So, you know, I did have an interaction with a person on the subreddit, um, you know, or like in real life where, you know, like I don't, I don't care if people like disagree, but you know, if, if what you're saying is in my estimation, not a safe thing, yeah, I'm gonna push that shit. <laughs> you know, I'll either, uh, I, I, I don't usually have to ban a lot of stuff or remove a lot of things, but if I think that it's like unsafe in some way, I like will. Um, and, you know, as soon as I'm like, ooh, no, this isn't, mm, boop, done, gone. And, you know, I'm, it's got to be, it's got to be my estimation because it's my space that I'm responsible for. Um, you know, so people might disagree, but, you know, good, they can disagree. But I, I do get to make that decision. And they can disagree with it and they get to make that decision. You know, when we all respect each other's ability to not agree with us. And also respect ourselves enough to go, mm, I don't feel like being around this. This is not really anything I want to give energy or attention or focus or time to. Um, there's a lot of metaphysical discussion around how what we give our attention to is what is multiplied or magnified in our life. And I'm... I don't know. I don't know that that's accurate one way or the other. But I do know that watching my son kind of adopt some patterns from people in his life that are very kind of critical. And I'm sitting here like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is, you are not going to be happy in the future. If literally the, the only stuff you're focusing on is the stuff that you, it, that's negative. Like you're boo-boo, we got to balance this out with some positive, you know, like you don't have to ignore reality, but at the same time, it is also skewed to only focus on the negative. Um, a lot of the way the positivity people who don't really quite understand the concept 
you know, they'll come at it from like, oh, be positive all the time. And that's not right either. Um, you know, and being, being positive is understanding that there is more than this immediate moment. And even if we're in this immediate moment and it's painful and it's hard and it sucks and we hurt and someone's hurting us, we know it's going to end. We know that. You know, that's positive. That's positive knowing that that we'll get through it. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, so we don't want to be, we don't want to be like, mm, everything's awesome necessarily all the time. But we don't want to be like, everybody sucks and they're dumb and this is dumb and I hate everything either. Like, not, that's not realistic. That's not balanced. Um, so anyway, if you're... If you're recognizing that you're chasing people, you're doing all this emotional labor to hopefully get them to see you or understand you, there's a point in our healing process where we realize, oh, those aren't our people. Our people are going to make that effort. Our people are going to consider us, our feelings, our opinions, even if they disagree. Um, that's who we want to be surrounded by. And when we're coming from that, that loss, that yearning, that neediness, that scarcity mentality, uh, we just push people away because no one wants to be around that. Everyone wants to be around somebody who's chilling and enjoying life and having a great time. Like that's, that's what we about for the most part. Um, and so I look back on my younger self and how, oh, how desperate, how desperate I was. And I was in so much pain and I was so much needing people to validate me my experience that I wasn't even looking at them and validating them in their experience I wasn't perspective taking for what they were doing you know I was focused on me it was this like very it's like this very um, unhealthy inverted kind of narcissism and I've seen it I've seen it in a lot of victims of abuse I think that's a stage that a lot of us move through but we don't have to stay there, <laughs> you know? We, we do move on, we do move forward. We do heal, we do grow. And, you know, someday we, we look back and we go, oh man, if only I knew. But we gotta respect healing is a process. Life is a journey. We're all moving forward, we're doing our best. But we do not need to waste our time with people who are not interested and understand what and understanding where we're coming from like life's too short we all need that <laughs> anyway hope everyone's having a great day i'll talk to you next time